Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about hepatitis V virus. So first, why there is a need to talk about hepatitis V virus? Because there are approximately 257 million people who are chronically infected with this virus, okay? 257 million people. And out of which more than 880,000 people die every year because of this virus, okay? So hepatitis V virus, the death due to this is around 880,000. That's a lot, right? So that's why we really need to talk about this virus and we really need to understand about this virus. So the picture here, it shows the uh, schematic structure of hepatitis V virus, uh, the, the, about the details of which, you know, I'm going to talk to you later, okay? So what is a hepatitis V virus structure contain? So it contains, as you can see here in the picture, uh, the envelope and also this uh, nucleocapsid, okay? It consists of the envelope and the nucleocapsid. If you look at the envelope of this hepatitis V virus, it has three envelope proteins, large hepatitis B surface antigens, represented by L, large hepatitis B surface antigens, medium hepatitis B surface antigens, represented by M, and uh, small hepatitis B surface antigens, represented by S, okay? So basically, this hepatitis B virus, the envelope of which it contains large, medium, and small hepatitis B surface antigens. So this is the envelope. And here I have shown that this uh, large hepatitis B surface antigens, the domains present on the large hepatitis B surface antigens are pre-S1 and pre-S2, okay? So if we look inside then the nucleocapsid, the nucleocapsid, the structure is icosahedral structure, you know, it's hexagonal structure, and inside which we have partially double-stranded, relaxed, circular DNA, okay, genome. So this genome is about 3.2 uh, kilobases. So basically the hepatitis B virus genome is a relaxed circular DNA, which is about 3.2 kilodalton, and it is partially double-stranded. Why partially double-stranded? If you look at this picture here, you will see that outer, outside strand is the negative strand, which is completely circular, but the inside strand is a positive strand which is partially circular as shown by the dots here. So it's a double stranded, but partially uh, circular, the inner one. And this negative strand also has the polymerase, okay? And the, struct, the, the, the diameter of this hepatitis B virus is about 42 nanometer, but the diameter of the nucleocapsid, if you, only this diameter is about 27 nanometers. The diameter from here to here is 42, but the diameter of this part is on, this part only, this part only is uh, 27, okay? So this hepatitis B virus, it belongs to Hepardna viridae family, like it's, you know, Hepardna viridae family, this one you have to remember, okay? Hepardna viridae family. So in addition, uh, this nucleocapsid, it also contains chaperones and protein kinases that are also packaged, you know, within the nucleocapsids. And also, like I said before, you know, it contains a viral genomic DNA. The, 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 the DNA of hepatitis B virus is, sorry, the genome of hepatitis B virus is a DNA, and it's a circular, um, relaxed DNA, which is partially double-stranded. And of course, it is covariant into fiber and N at the minus strand, as you can see, this is minus strand, and the polymerase is linked at the minus strand. Okay, so this is the, a brief introduction of hepatitis B virus. Now, let's talk more about hepatitis B virus genome. Like I said before, hepatitis B virus, it's a circular, partially double-stranded, relaxed DNA, plus and minus strand. Minus strand is on the outside, which is completely circular, plus strand on, is on the inside, which is not completely circular, as shown by the dots here, with the variable base pairs. So, and this with the negative uh, negative strand, which is present on the outside, we have the P protein here. Okay, so P protein. So basically, we have four overlapping genes <coughs> for translating the polymerase. Excuse me. So one, uh, this is one open reading frame. That's pre S pre S one. It's shown by this one here. Pre S one, pre S two, and S. 
and another is this operating frame here c pre c and c another is x here and this this one is the polymerase so we have like four overlapping zines for the um, and this pre s1 pre s and s you know what what do they code for you know what do this part code for they actually code for hepatitis b surface antigen lsbsaz and what does this pre pre c and c do it it codes for core protein and this x it actually codes for svx protein okay so c and s open reading frames you know this is c and this is s open reading frames like you know further divided into um they they are not divided but they have extensions so the c has pre c this is the extension at the five prime end and s has pre s which is divided into pre s1 and pre s2 at the five prime end okay so then pre s reason is divided into pre s1 and pre s2 domains like i said and the translation of s o r f when this s o r f you know this open reading frame when this is actually translated then what does what it leads to the production of large medium and small hepatitis b surface antigen okay so translation of s is result results in large medium and small hepatitis b surface antigens whereas the translation of pre c o r f okay when this pre c o r f is translated it results in a secretory protein that is called hepatitis b e antigen okay s b e a z the translation of this results in hepatitis b e antigen uh, which is an accessory protein uh, that is required for establishing chronicity. What is the translation of C actually C O R F that results in capsid protein? When this is translated, it results in the capsid protein. And the next thing is the translation of X. It results in S V X protein, which is required for this establishment of infection and maintenance of active replication. How by inhibiting the by inhibiting the host nuclear uh, restriction factor, and that factor is called sister chromatic chromatic cohesion five six. Okay, so this is the a bit more detail of hepatitis B genome structure. Now moving on to the next slide. Here I'm going to talk about the hepatitis B replication cycle. Okay, so what happens? We have here hepatitis B virion. So what it does is that this virion it has it has on the surface hepatitis B surface antigens with the help of which it attaches to the uh, cell membrane of hepatocytes. Okay, and it, it attaches, but the specificity specificity and uh, there is one specific receptor that is present on the hepatocyte so that is called sodium torochloride co-transporting polypeptide NTCP. this with this this uh, video on part this binds and it is internalized and inside the cell inside the cell what happens is that uncoating occurs and and we have the nucleocapsid okay so so how this happens? Fusion of viral envelope with endosomal membrane actually releases viral capsid. Okay, so this is the complete viral virion by this particle, and when it actually uh, enters the cell, it is uncoated, and we the, the virus gets rid of its surface antigens, and we have this uh, uh, nucleocapsid. And this nucleocapsid actually it contains uh, the, the nuclear localization signals in it. There are nuclear localization signals. Therefore, it is translocated to the nucleus. Okay, it is translocated to the nucleus. You know, it goes to the nucleus through this nuclear nuclear pore complexes. In the nucleus, there are nuclear pore complexes through which it goes to the nucleus. And in the nucleus, actually, this relaxed circular DNA is converted to covalently closed circular double stranded DNA. Okay, CCC DNA. Okay, so RCDNA is converted to covalently closed circular double stranded DNA in the nucleus. And this happens. And this actually acts as the uh, template template for the transcription, okay? And different transcriptional products are formed, you know, like shown here. And one of the major, uh, and these transcription products, you know, they are actually exported out, okay? So the, the, the different transcription products are formed and they are exported out from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. And, but the larger one is this pgRNA that's called pre-genomic RNA. Okay, larger one is pre-genomic RNA which is actually incorporated when it, it goes into the cell uh, cytoplasm and is incorporated into the replication complexes in the cytoplasm. Yes, in the cytoplasm with the replica incorporation with the replication complexes and um, comprising viral polymerase and core protein. Okay, so SBC, AZ is core protein and viral polymerase. 
So then what happens is that this pgRNA, you know, reverse transcription occurs, okay? So from this pgRNA, the relaxed circular DNA is formed, okay? Because of the, with the help of this, uh, because of the reverse transcription, right? So pgRNA is converted into rcDNA. Okay, so now two things can happen. What one thing is that this rcDNA, rcDNA, it can actually replenish ccDNA or it can further, you know, uh, go to the nucleus and make this CC, uh, triple C DNA, or it goes for further assembly because it's still the complete particle has not formed. So then what happens is that this as we DNA containing capsids, okay, so basically uh, with this RC DNA, with, the, with this nuclear capsid, what happens is that Hepatitis B DNA containing capsid binds to hepatitis B surface proteins on the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so this one actually it binds to hepatitis B surface proteins, okay, to form the complete virus particle. That's our goal. And this occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum. And then this is translocated into the lumen before being released as a mature virus particle. Okay, then this is translocated, uh, of course, into the lumen and released into the bloodstream as a mature virus particle. Okay, so then here uh, there are different products, different uh, except this triple C DNA, hepatitis B RC DNA, hepatitis B RNA, as B E A Z, as B S A Z, as B C A Z, and 22 kilo Dalton pre core protein. They are all actually easily measurable in the blood and therefore they can be used in diagnosis, but except this covalently closed circular DNA. Okay, these all proteins they can be measured in the blood and this can be used in the diagnosis of hepatitis B virus infection. Uh, the three antigens, uh, hepatitis, hepatitis B core antigens, SBEAZ and P22CR, they are collectively called actually hepatitis B core related antigen, SBCCRAC. And they are produced from translation of different starting codons of the pre-C core gene and differential protein, uh, protein um, processing afterwards. So what happens is that uh, so we have these uh, different um, SBCRAZs, right? Hepatitis B correlated antigens. How they are synthesized because of the different um, different uh, this this they produce from the translation of different starting codons. So of same the same gene pre C gene, but the different starting codons, right? So we have your core protein, pre core protein processing, and all this. So basically, you see SBCAZ from the core protein and SBAZ and P22CR. The difference is that, and the gene is the same, but the starting codons are the different. So, uh, so this, uh, using those different starting codons of the pre C gene, pre C core gene, actually, uh, we, we get all these um, products SBCAZ, SBAZ, and P22CR, and all of which can be measured in the um, blood in the diagnosis okay so now i talked about this how this virus replication occurs in this slide i'm going to talk about how we how the how the person they get virus this viral infection actually this virus transmits via blood to blood contact okay and also by a sexual contact you know if we have sex with the person who has already been infected with this virus and this virus gets transmitted and also from the mother infected mother to the child during the birth this can happen this can transfer and also because using these all instruments tattoos piercing barbers and you know these these kind of things actually also if they are contaminated with the viral particle then we can also get infected and of course the needles sharing the needles and also sharing the equipments like razors same brushes and earrings etc that can also lead to the transmission of this virus and on on Israel healthcare practices okay so basically blood sex and needles you know these are the main things how by which or how this virus gets transmitted from and the sick person to the healthy person okay now finally the treatment so before i talk about the treatment i must mention that hepatitis b virus genome is actually present it, it's it divided into confirmed nine hepatitis b genotypes the a to i and one putative genotype that's the okay putative genotype is J and hepatitis B is uh, divided into nine confirmed SBB genotypes and one putative genotypes. So in the for the treatment, we have different drugs. For example, alpha in alpha interferon and how it acts is that it acts by inhibiting um, hepatitis B replication by preventing you know this pre-genomic RNA 
containing rep, nu, nu, nucleic capsid assembly okay so it by preventing the pre-genomic pre RNA uh, containing nucleocapsid assembly in mice, in mice and also in the cell line. Okay, and we also have three nucleoside analog drugs, lamivudine, entecavir, and telvudine, and one nucleoside analog that is erifovir. So all, all this has been approved for by the FDA, and all of these they act selectively by inhibiting hepatitis V virus DNA replication and they cause premature actually chain termination okay so they basically cause premature chain termination now talking about the vaccines yes we have vaccines available for hepatitis b virus and these vaccines are preventive we have two kinds of vaccines plasma derived vaccines and recombinant dna derived vaccines so these are they are used for the prevention um, purposes these vaccines so finally I have a knowledge challenge question for you guys. So based on the discussion that I presented about the hepatitis B virus, which one of the following statement, which which one of the following enters the proteins, uh, which one of the following, sorry, not the proteins, cannot be detected in the blood of SBB infected patient? Okay, option A, triple cDNA, SBC, AZ, SBS, AZ, P22, CR, or rcDNA. Thank you guys for your attention. Thank you very much.